in this lecture i am going to prove some of the properties of the correlation coefficient okay it is uh, denoted by rho and um, the most important properties of the correlation coefficient lies between minus 1 and plus 1 okay so the correlation coefficient is uh, defined as the expected value of x minus e of x divided by its standard deviation sigma x times y minus e of y divided by its standard deviation sigma y now let me prove this property for the special case okay where i am going to assume that the random variables with the zero means and unity variances so x and y have a zero mean zero means and uh, unit variances therefore uh, e of x equal to zero then the mean of y equal to zero and its standard deviation sigma or sigma x square is equal to one and uh, sigma y square is equal to one we know the formula for variance of the x so variance of x equal to e of x squared minus e of x the whole squared now since we assumed uh, the mean equal to zero so therefore this guy is going to be zero therefore variance of x sigma x square equal to e of x squared equal to 1 by the same argument i can claim that or i can say that sigma y squared equal to variance of y is equal to expected value of e of y squared and this is also 1 let us keep these two for our calculation let me call this is equation number one and then uh, uh, this is equation number two e of x equal to zero and e of y equal to zero and let me say this is three and this one is four now let us take the correlation coefficient rho is equal to expected value of x minus e of x anyway zero divided by sigma x square equal x squared equal to one therefore this is going to be one times y minus 0 by sigma y square squared equal to 1 so this is simply expected value of x y so this is the <coughs> correlation coefficient now for the simplified case now we will show that in this uh, special case where uh, x where, where mean equal to 0 and variance is uh, equal to 1 the expected value of x times y this one lies between minus and minus 1 and plus 1 so we need to prove that the expected value of x and y lies between minus 1 and plus 1 let us take some quantity and we will try to prove this but the proof is you no know, remains valid uh, with a little bit of you know more algebra along with the similar lines for the general case even if you assume the mean is not equal to 0 and uh, variance is not equal to 1 then also the proof is valid but a little bit you know extra things you need to do that's it okay now what we will do is we will consider uh, a quantity x minus rho times y and uh, square of this take the square of this and take the expected value of this one okay now this is a quadratic uh, in a term so write it uh, as expanded value of uh, as follows write it in the expanded form therefore this is see to prove that i am considering this quantity x minus rho times y i am taking this quantity and i am squaring it and then i am taking the expected value so then expand the quadratic term because it is a x minus rho y squared so x squared plus rho squared times y squared minus 2 times rho times x and y since expectation is a linear operator 
I can take expectation inside this expression. So I will get e of x squared plus uh, rho is a constant you can pull out of the ex expectation. So e times y squared again here 2 under rho or uh, you know constant constants so you can pull out of the uh, expectation so 2 times rho times expected value of x y now uh, if you look at this one e of x squared is the same as variance of x so what is the variance of x it is equal to 1 right and uh, rho times rho times e of y squared is variance of y minus 2 times rho times what is e of x y we assume that e of x y equal to 1 so maybe let me call this as equation number 5 so this comes because of equation number 5 and uh, this comes due to due to equation number uh, 4 and this also we are writing in term because of equation number 4 <coughs> So variance of 1 we assumed this is equal to 1 plus uh, rho times uh, the variance of y is again 1 minus 2 times rho times e of x y equal to rho. So this is 1 plus rho minus 2 rho square right am I writing correctly somewhere uh, it is getting wrong mm, where is it this is okay. Yeah, I'm sorry here is square I measured it so this is squared and this is also squared now it is correct so this is 1 minus rho squared okay so the left hand side what we have is expected value of x minus rho times y whole squared is equal to this expression now if you notice here that this expectation of a non-negative random variable okay so this is the expectation of the non negative random variable why x minus rho y is a random variable is a random variable x minus rho times y whole squared is a non negative random variable okay if you take expectation of uh, uh, a non negative random variable you will get a non negative value so x minus rho times y the whole square so you are taking the expectation of a non negative random variable so the answer is going to be a non negative number or value you will get number or you will get a value so therefore 1 minus rho square must be non negative it should be greater than or equal to 0 therefore the right hand side should be non negative that is why i put 1 minus rho square is greater than or equal to 0 right because uh, x minus rho times y the whole square is a non negative random variable we are taking the uh, uh, expectation of a non negative random variable so you'll end up with a, a non negative value and that non negative value is going to be 1 minus rho square if you look at the right hand side you are getting a non negative value therefore so this 1 minus rho square is going to be greater than or equal to 0 okay so now rearrange this equation so rho square is less than or equal to 1 because of the minus sign and therefore this implies that the rho lies between minus 1 less than or equal to rho less than or equal to 1 so so this means that what uh, the rho is lies between minus 1 and uh, plus 1 okay and uh, that is the same as requiring that rho lies between minus 1 and plus 1 and so we have established uh, this important property at least uh, for the special case of uh, 0 means and uh, unit variance but the same you know proof you can use for uh, random variables where uh, it has a uh, uh, non zero mean and uh, non zero variance also okay so this uh, proof is remains valid more general random for more general random variables also 
Now let us look at some extreme cases. So what is the extreme case? See here in this we, what we said rho is less than or equal to 1 that means it takes maximum value of 1 or it can be less than 1 similarly it can take the minimum value of minus 1. Now let us take this maximum value extreme values because it cannot go beyond 1 and it cannot go beyond less than 1 right. So this is called a extreme value rho is rho equal to 1 is called extreme value and rho equal to minus 1 is called a extreme value. So these two are extreme values. Now let us assume the extreme values that means what let us say the mod of rho equal to 1 instead of writing two lines I can write in a simplified form rho equal to 1 or I can say rho equal to 1 or uh, rho equal to minus 1 you can write like this way or in this way both are you know same okay you can say mod of uh, rho equal to 1 or rho equal to 1 or rho equal to minus 1 both are correct this also correct this also correct but this is a compact way of writing fine now when rho equal to 1 then uh, what is going to happen okay so that is uh, the absolute value is equal to 1 then what happens in this case that's what we want to find so when I say rho mod of rho is equal to 1 in the left hand side you know that x minus rho times y the whole squared is equal to 1 minus rho squared now when you substitute rho equal to 1 then what you will get 1 minus 1 equal to 0 so in the right hand side it will become 0 but in the left hand side it is going to be x minus rho times y the whole squared equal to 0 what does it say because see this is a non-negative random variable as I said because x minus rho y is a random variable and x minus rho y the whole squared is a non-negative random variable you subtract one random variable from the other and you take the square of that again you will end up with another random variable that random variable is going to be non-negative random variable now once you take the expectation of this Once you take uh, the expectation of this, then you will get some non-negative value but what happens here it becomes 0 therefore something is no, uh, you know some for all something is no, you know wrong in this, wrong in the sense for all uh, you know condition this is going to be 0 so therefore the argument is going to be 0. Now the expected value of the square of this random variable okay is equal to 0 then only the right hand side will be 0 right so let me write clearly it is uh, somewhat fishy so in that case when I substitute rho equal to 1 the right hand side is 0 okay and uh, this implies that the right hand side equal to 0 implies that the expected value of the square of this random variable is equal to 0 that means what here we have a non-negative quantity non-negative quantity or non-negative sorry non-negative random variable and its expected value is 0 which means what that we have we calculate the expected value of uh, you know this term this term there will be no positive contributions okay so this x minus rho times y the whole square is not giving any contribution when you calculate the expectation not giving any contribution that means what the contribution of this x minus rho y equal to 0 not giving any contribution means it is not giving any uh, you know uh, you know any uh, you know non-zero value okay so in that case this is equal to 0 because you know the formula once if you know this then you will do this x minus rho times y the whole square times uh, fx y of x x comma y times dx equal to 0 that means what this is a non zero pdf 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 cannot be zero okay it's a non zero and if you do the integration something such that you are getting zero means this is equal to zero <coughs> for certain x and y pairs x and y pairs this term is going to be zero this x minus rho y the whole square term is going to be zero otherwise you will not get the this zero value okay so the only condition this happens that is the right hand side equal to zero is that uh, 
x minus rho y the whole square is equal to 0 otherwise you will not get them and moreover in this what we assumed rho equal to 1 therefore substitute rho equal to 1 in this mod of rho equal to 1 so x minus 1 times y the whole square equal to 1 that is x minus y equal to 1 so x equal to y when rho equal to 1 or uh, let me write and uh, if rho equal to minus this is this is the case for uh, rho equal to 1 now if you substitute rho equal to minus 1 then uh, x ma x plus rho times y the whole square equal to 1 sorry this is minus 1 right i wrote i said minus 1 but i wrote plus 1 minus 1 so x plus rho y equal to 0 this is 0 and uh, here rho equal to plus 1 therefore this is x plus y equal to 1 because of rho equal to I am sorry, I am totally I am sorry because uh, I am confusing you. Let me rewrite this one properly. See, we have x minus rho y, the whole square equal to uh, 0, right? Now, let us assume rho equal to minus 1. Then what happens? x plus y, the whole squared is equal to 0. That means what? x plus y is equal to 0. So, x equal to minus y. Therefore, either x takes the value plus y or minus y in that case the correlation coefficient takes the extreme value okay so <clears throat> when the absolute value of rho is equal to 1 this means that we have either x equal to y or x equal to minus y in the case if rho equal to rho is equal to minus 1 therefore the final point i would like to write here is if mod of rho equal to 1 then x is equal to rho times y this implies x equal to y or x is equal to sorry minus y okay therefore uh, we see that if the correlation coefficient has an absolute value of 1 okay then x and y are related to each other according to the simple linear relation what is the simple li linear relation either x equal to y or x equal to minus y and it is an extreme form of dependence between the two random variables therefore x equal to y or x equal to minus y these are extreme form of form of dependencies and uh, i would like to you know include some more points in this regarding that uh, that we know that uh, this correlation coefficient uh, tells us how strongly the two random variables are related right to Now, when I say rho equal to 1, then they are very strongly related. That means, if you know one random variable or if you know the value of y, then you can recover the value of x. And conversely, if you know x, let me write down properly. Uh, if you know the random variable x, then you can recover or you can tell us what is the random variable y or similarly if you know y then you can recover what the uh, recover the random variable x so i want to you know you know tell us uh, tell you that how it is related in terms of a scatter plate okay so the case of complete correlation is a case where one random variable is a linear function of the other. That's what we proved now. So linear form x equal to y or x equal to minus y. Okay. So now x equal to y means it looks like this. Completely related. I'm sorry. Okay. Straight line or else let me draw. Like this. 
So in terms of a scatter plot, um, this rho equal to 1 uh, would mean that there is a certain line and uh, that the only possible x comma y pairs that, it hap that can happen would lie, in, lie on that line. See the points will lie exactly on the straight line. It need not be x equal to y or it can be x equal to some constant times y. You can take the line like this also. Okay, now when uh, let us take the second case. This is the case where uh, rho is exactly equal to 1. Now if you take rho is close to 1, then what happens? The points lies close to the line it will, but it will not lie exactly on the line but it is close to the line in the scatter diagram the points lies close to the line okay so the case where correlation coefficient is close to one would be a scatter plot like this okay where x's and y's are quite strongly aligned here it is complete dependence when x when rho equal to one but here x and y are quite strongly aligned up that means they are very much close to together okay so they are quite uh, strongly aligned with each other may not be exactly but fairly strongly okay may not be exactly but fairly strongly So therefore, this is a case where rho equal to 1, let me say take a rho equal like 0.995 or 0.992 like this, you can take very close to 1. In that case, the points lies very close to this line. When you take a rho equal to exactly equal to 1, equal to 1, the points lies exactly on the no, straight line. Okay, it will not deviate, not even deviate. So there is a strong association between the two random variables. So if you know the one random variable, then you can... Uh, find out the other random variable so x equal to y or x equal to minus y in case you know when you say the two random variables have non-zero means in that case you have to modify the expression a little bit and some additional you know algebra you need to do that's it but the same argument and the same you know proof is exactly valid for the random variables where it where it uh, has a non-zero mean and a non-zero variance okay so at this point let me stop so in the next lecture uh, let me talk about uh, uh, some problems related to covariance and uh, the correlation coefficient thank you